when it comes to networking in Kubernetes, I'd argue that it's actually one of the biggest topics. Now, we're not going to go super, super in depth here, but what you should know is that networking is just as important in Kubernetes as it is literally anywhere else. So let's go ahead and take a look at this deployment here. Now, this is a very simple deployment. I'm just creating a stateless Kubernetes application running Nginx. So I'm just going to run kubectl create minus f nginx.yaml. All right, so now if I run kubectl get pods, this container is creating. All right, so we have our pods here. Now I'm going to run kubectl get pods output wide. And as we can see, there is a little bit more information here when we do the output wide that essentially just, you know, gives us all the information back about a pod. But what we'll notice here is there are IP addresses. So inside of Kubernetes, there is the, the essentially the network, how Kubernetes can communicate with pods, with applications, with clusters, etc. And that's going to be around your kube proxy. The gist of the kube proxy is it just handles all of the networking internally. So we have these IP addresses, but these IP addresses aren't available outside of the pods. However, they are available between each pod. And because these IP addresses are internal on the kube proxy, you can't reach them outside of you know, the pods themselves. Now, the other thing too is these IP addresses may not stay the same, nor will the pod names stay the same. And the reason why is because pods are ephemeral. So number one, how do you reach, for example, uh, an application running in Nginx that's running on a pod? And how do you have some type of identifier with a pod? Well, there are a few different ways, things like stateful sets, but from a networking standpoint, we're primarily focused on services. So I'm gonna run kubectl, delete minus f, nginx.yaml. And then we're gonna comment this bit out here. So what this is essentially saying is it's creating a service. Now a service has about two use cases. Number one, it's for you to be able to communicate with you know, the deployment because the service name never changes even if the pods go away because again, they're ephemeral. So sometimes they get deleted, recreated, etc. The service name never goes away. And if you have a front end service, you can attach you know, like a cloud load balancer, for example, to the service so you can reach the application. So now I'm gonna run kubectl create minus F nginx.yaml. Now, as we can see, we have our deployment and we have our service. So I'm going to run kubectl get service. And as we can see, it does have the cluster IP attached. And again, that's internal, but it does not have an external IP. Now, if we're thinking, you know, maybe this is a backend service of sorts. Now, other applications inside of Kubernetes can interact with this nginx deployment via the nginx service name. Now, not only do pods have networking, but so do your clusters. So if I run kubectl get nodes, let's do an output wide here. As you can see, I have an internal IP address. So this is just a cluster running in Minikube, but I do have an IP address associated to my cluster. Now, when you're in the cloud, for example, you may have public IP addresses. You're going to have subnets that are attached to your cluster. Now from a networking standpoint, there are a ton of things to go into when it comes to Kubernetes and networking. And I do highly recommend diving in a bit and seeing what else is out there. Thank you so much for watching.